Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to be speaking about a highly requested topic that I talk about on my Instagram, I get questions about, I've referred to in previous YouTube videos, it is the topic of reverse dieting. So before we jump into this video I just want to put a few disclaimers out there before people jump to conclusions. I am in no way, shape or form, a medical expert in the sense that I'm able to give nutritional advice to people. Um, so please do take what I say with a pinch of salt. This is purely from my experience, my knowledge and past background of this topic. It's not something you should take too seriously as it's not something I've been trained to be able to give advice on. It's purely, like I said, from experience. I am a medical expert in the sense that I take x-rays for a living. I am a diagnostic radiographer, so I'm a professional in that sense, but that has nothing to do with nutrition in any sense. So I'm not a dietitian, um, and I thought I'd put that out there because a lot of people claim to give great advice and things but they themselves are not experts and unless they are you should just take their advice with a pinch of salt as well. Hi guys I'm just watching this clip back and I really did not mean to kick that camera so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I also want to put out there that there is no wrong or right way to be fit. There is no wrong or right way to be healthy and live your life basically. As long as you're happy and your body is functioning the way it should be and the way that you are doing whatever you're doing to reach your personal goal is working for you personally then that's all that matters um, and don't let anyone tell you any different than that. This is not a video for someone that is currently having a disordered mindset towards food. It is not a video for someone that is trying to lose weight fast and quickly and a shortcut. It is not a video for someone who is not into the idea or doesn't like the idea of macros and if it fits your macros, all that stuff. Um, this is a video for someone that wants to better themselves, for themselves and nobody else. It is a video for someone that wants to understand macro tracking better. Um, wants to gain weight, increase their metabolism, or potentially lose weight. So to start with, what is reverse dieting? So reverse dieting is a concept that is employed by individuals where you gradually and slowly increase your calories over time to adjust with your meta metabolism accordingly. It is a method that I like to employ both to increase my calories and to decrease my calories because like I said the concept of, is, of it is to slowly increase or slowly decrease your calories over a time and that is because your metabolism needs that time to adjust accordingly. It can't just jump overnight to the calories that you consumed the day before and want to consume the following day. It has to gradually increase and gradually adjust to your calories over time. So to understand the idea of reverse dieting, you have to understand the fundamentals of a caloric surplus and a caloric deficit. A caloric deficit is where you are eating less than what your body requires. So you are eating less than your maintenance calories. And to be in a caloric surplus, it means that you are eating more than your body requires and more than your maintenance calories. So your maintenance calories is your total daily energy expenditure and it is what your body uses for physical activity and your BMR put together. So now your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. This is the basic amount of calories that your body requires just when you are sleeping down, not moving, not doing anything, just to be able to function, that is the amount of calories that your body needs. So you shouldn't be eating only that amount of calories because you are moving, you are using energy throughout the day, you're not just sitting down all day and even if you are just sitting down, your your mind is working, you are fiddling with your feet or playing around with the remote control watching Netflix, you're doing something so it's burning extra calorie, calories and hence you require more energy than your basal metabolic rate and so that now that is your TDE, your total daily energy expenditure. 
To calculate them both, I will leave a calculator that I like to use down below. It is either if it fits your macros.com or there is total daily energy expenditure, T-D-E-E.com -E, um, as well which I'll leave in the description box down below. I like to combine both of the values and average them um, because they are just calculators, so they are just a rough guide. They are not accurate. To be able to um, have accurate results, you have to go see a person that is actually trained to be able to calculate it and they have a bunch of formulas and they um, use your body fat percentage and things like that. These calculators are not accurate and it doesn't really matter like it is all trial and error this nothing is going to be accurate and you don't want to stress about it either because stress just causes other issues that we don't want so typically someone employs the idea of a reverse diet when they are coming out from a caloric deficit which is like I said a process where you eat less than your body requires and so now you employ reverse dieting to gradually increase your maintenance and potentially increase to your caloric surplus. Being in a caloric deficit obviously makes you lose weight. Being in a caloric surplus obviously it makes you gain weight. There are two opposite processes that need to be treated separately. You are going to look more lean in this sense if you do it properly, if you're going through a caloric deficit over time you are going to build muscle when you are in a caloric surplus because the muscle building process requires extra energy more than your total daily energy expenditure to be able to fuel the muscle building process so that is the two concepts between the two processes so then you've got to judge from your opinion what you want to start with do you want to look lean in that sense or do you want to build muscle in that sense and you have to go through the different processes separately whichever process you go in between i would always personally start by tracking through your total daily energy expenditure for a short while seeing which calories work best for you and then working your way down or working your way up according to your personal goals so I'm going to be sharing with you guys my personal goal and my personal experience of reverse dieting but please do understand that many different factors factor in within how much calories I should be consuming. It is my gender which factors into it, my age, my height, my weight, my activity level and overall your genetics play a big part of it. So a few questions which I get asked about a lot is, do I track my progress through the scales? Do I track my weight? And no, I don't, but if I want to increase or decrease my calories accordingly or maybe in adjust my total daily energy expenditure calories um, according to these macro calculators that I use and leave in the description box down below, um, then I will track my weight just to see where I'm currently at but I won't work off of it religiously and I would only weigh myself that one time to calculate my macros and calories and then leave it at that. I don't like to track it religiously because it is just a figure and this scale weight is not going to define how you look respectively. It is just a number to see where you're currently at now because your body fluctuates in weight according to your water weight. Maybe you didn't sleep well the last night, maybe you had a lot to eat and didn't digest your food properly last night as well. So when you weigh yourself first thing in the morning, it might be different to another day. And that's why I don't really find it reliable. It, I just take it with a pinch of salt and work off the premises of that. Um, with everything, I don't like to stress about it too much. I don't track my macros religiously. I don't weigh out everything to the gram. I don't track my macros every single day. I use macro calculating and tracking as a guide, a tool and just a structure because if you know me on my YouTube and on my Instagram, you know I like routine and I like structure. So tracking calories is a way of doing that and I find it really beneficial in when I want to lose weight or when I want to gain weight. So when people ask me how I started my fitness journey and things like that, I will leave 
a link down below with my fitness journey video it is really old so please do bear that in mind and I do come across really shy and timid um, so yeah if you give that a watch but it does outline some facts that I experienced throughout my fitness journey um, however there, I can't really put a timeline on it because I suffered from such an eating disorder and a restricted mindset it came in waves and fluctuations whereas now I fully understand tracking macros and it's really un helped me understand that food is fuel and you need to be able to eat what your body requires you to eat to be able to function properly whether you eat whether your goal is to even gain weight or lose weight you still need to be eating a sufficient amount of calories to be able to function properly because you never want to be in such a caloric surplus that your body can't handle it or such a caloric deficit that your body can't handle it either i love to have everything slow controlled and maintained I'm in no way, shape or form promoting a restricted mindset. You can eat whatever you want in abundance just within your body requirements and I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, a lot of people don't like the idea of tracking calories and macros because they find it restrictive whereas I don't find it restrictive at all. I find it a really useful tool and if you come across that way rather than using it for something that you've got to work on religiously and weigh out everything to the gram and if you don't reach that gram or that macro then you have to give up and things like that if you don't treat it like that then it can be really beneficial because you never want to be too stressed about it because it's not the right way to go about it so on to my stats so i am 22 years of age i am a female obviously i weigh 46 to 48 kg like i say i don't really weigh myself and i haven't weighed myself in some so long um, but it fluctuates between that typically whether I'm losing or gaining weight it doesn't fluctuate in such a big range and I typically work out five to six times a week with one to two rest days so in terms of my total daily energy expenditure and my current calories and my caloric surplus calories here is the basic outline so for my total daily energy expenditure, typically and over time, it has been roughly 1,900 calories. And so when I want to maintain my physique, I stay within that. If I want to lose some weight, I will gradually adopting the concept of reverse dieting, decrease my calories every two weeks by 50 calories. So for that two week period, I would stay, um, stay for instance 1900 calories the following two weeks i will decrease that down to 1850 calories and stay at that for those two weeks every single day then the further two weeks i would jump on to 1800 calories and stay at that for the two weeks and then i will go down to 1750 calories and stay at that for the two weeks and that is where i'm currently at now will i decrease further no i won't this is my cutting calories and that may seem high for some people it may seem very low for some people whatever it seems to you it doesn't matter because it's what's right for me um however from past experience my cutting calories have been much lower um, and, and that means that my body required less calories to be able to see like a shreddy result that I wanted to see um, but now I can increase my calories and cut my calories in a higher caloric um, intake which are 1750 and still be able to see the shreddy results that I desire and that is because my metabolism over time has adjusted accordingly to my um, activity level and fluctuation in my weight so polar opposite now if i want to gain weight i would then go in reverse 50 calories every two weeks back up to my maintenance stay at my maintenance for a month or so just to acclimatize to it all and then adopt the idea of reverse dieting and go up every two weeks by 50 calories up to my caloric surplus calories which are 2100 to 2150 that is what works best for me so i go from 1750 to 
1.2150 and that is the range that I work in between with 1900 as the midline. So I hope you grasp that concept and how it works. Um, those are my personal statistics so please don't copy them because they won't be useful for you. Like what is useful for you is the useful links that I'm going to link in the description box down below for you to be able to track but I wanted to share that just to give reference on it and also um, just show you how reverse dieting really works. So now that I've defined what reverse dieting is and I've given you a rough idea on what it looks like and how you structure it and things like that, I'm going to get into a few nitty gritty bits and bobs. Um, starting out with what if you hit a plateau and you're not seeing results anymore on your cutting calories. In that sense, I would say that your body has reached its limit it doesn't want to be at those calories anymore and you need to gradually increase it back up to your maintenance and stay at that until your body is able to adjust accordingly and adapt to the new calories because hitting in a plateau purely means that your body is just content with where it is and it's not seeing any more results it's not going to give you any more results but increasing your calories um, you don't want to decrease it further than your cutting calories, that is just a no-go zone. Um, that's going into starvation zone and just going to drastically decrease your metabolism and that's not what we want. We just want to work off the premises that um, we're slowly decreasing our calories according to our metabolism and then increasing it back up when we need to do so. So yeah, I often get questions about, oh, I've reached a plateau, what do I do now? And it's purely, you need to change up with what you're doing, whether that be through training or whether that be through um, your caloric intake. Another question that I get a lot on is, you track your macros, but do you track how much calories you're burning throughout the day? No, you never want to get the two together and calculate some maths. You just want to track your macros you don't want to track how much calories you're burning just ignore that all these fitness trackers and stuff like that i've got a fitness tracker but i purely use it to track my steps um throughout the day nothing else i'm not concerned with how many calories i'm burning because that essentially is your basal metabolic rate and is science it's not something that you should try and control through your caloric surplus or caloric deficit and try and compromise by how much calories you're burning and stuff. It's just too much mathematics for my head and yours. You don't need to go into that. It's too complicated. Losing weight and gaining weight is more basic than people think and is as much what I outlined at the start of the video. Gaining weight, caloric surplus, losing weight, caloric deficit. So remember that. Finally, I just want to touch on nutrition and foods and foods that people associate with dieting. There is no wrong or right food to eat. There is no healthy or healthier or bad or not so good food to have. That is all in your mindset. What is the difference between a broccoli and a piece of chocolate is the nutritional value. Broccoli has obviously more vitamins and minerals in it than a chocolate bar. However, in saying that, chocolate has some vitamins in it as well. However, the broccoli is understood to be the healthier option. Should you go and then restrict yourself from having that piece of chocolate that you've loved all your life? No. Should you have the both? Yes. Probably not together though. I mean, I haven't tried it. If you've tried broccoli and chocolate together, let me know because I'd love to know that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that tracking macros is not something which you do to restrict yourself from the food that you love. Eat whatever you want, whenever you want. There is no time limit. There is no um, scientific way of eating. You don't need to eat at a certain time. You don't have to cut off your eating window as well. All this intermittent fasting, Atkins diet, paleo diet and all this stuff, they all have a common thing which works and why people see results between them. It's because you're in a caloric deficit and that's why you're losing weight principle. You don't have to do it in a certain way. You don't have to restrict your carbs. You don't have to restrict your protein. You don't have to restrict your fat. All of these different macronutrients 
is required for your body to function properly and that's what you want to focus on you want to focus on your health you want to focus on your well-being and yeah part of that is eating foods that you love i love chocolate and before i didn't understand that i thought i couldn't eat a chocolate bar because it would make me fat that's the mindset that i have and that's the mindset that a lot of people have and it's totally wrong it's something that is drilled in people's head that other people promote that you can't have. Obviously, if you eat an excess amount of it, if you have five chocolate bars a day and you keep doing that every single day, then that is not healthy. That's not a healthy mindset to be in. It's not a healthy mindset as much as the mindset of not having that chocolate bar, if you see what I mean. Similarly, if you only eat broccoli and you only eat healthy food then that's not going to be healthy for you either because i mean i don't know about you i don't know who just loves vegetables i love vegetables but i also love chocolate and so it's a fine balance between the two if that makes sense that's why you'll often see on my instagram i make breakfast with a lot of chocolate in it i make it with some biscuits in it lotus party rings bourbon chocolates all the different kinds of biscuits you know it and people question, why do, how do you look the way you look and still eat this way? It is literally because I eat within my caloric intake and what my body requires. And I could eat anything I want and still maintain the physique that I'm currently at. Coincidentally, I love vegetables and so you do also see a lot of that on my page. But if you like your hash browns, if you like your potato wedges, there is no way um, that anyone should stop you from eating that. You can eat it, but just know that those sorts of food contain more calories than, let's say, let's say, a salad. And so the reason why I love to eat the way I do is that I can eat more for my caloric intake. So I can have a big, big bowl of salad with quinoa and sweet potatoes and all these nutritionally dense, less, in calorie foods for a bigger amount than let's just say a small size portion for the same amount of calories for potato wedges so it's your option whether you like to be a volume eater or whether you just like to eat the foods that you love within the amounts that you're limited to either way there's no better option personally I recommend volume eating um, you like I say you see me make big salad bowls. I love combining courgette, which is courgette noodles, with regular pasta. That bulks up the meal and obviously I'm eating more than just a big bowl of pasta for the same amount when the courgette and the pasta is combined together. And so I'm eating less but in my mind more if that makes sense and that's the idea of volume eating. It's about smart dieting and using your calories sensibly. So things that I also recommend is things like sugar free, sugar free stuff. So I use sugar free syrup, I use sugar free jelly and things like that. And obviously they're lower in calories but are going to satisfy my hunger and my cravings if I do have cravings for those. Rather than having the added sugar jellies which are much higher in calories and I can eat less of it for the calories that my body needs. So I just want to touch on a final few bits and bobs such as spot reduction, body fat percentage and macro splits. So to start with, um, body fat percentage and your fat distribution. You can't pick and choose nor can you um, spot reduce in certain areas of body. So you can't say that you want to lose weight in your tummy midsection and not lose weight in your thighs. Losing weight and gaining weight is an overall loss or gain and that is sometimes and most part of it regulated by your genetics. Some people are just more genetically gifted to have less body fat percentage in their midsection so they um, initially lose weight in their midsection first and give them that look that a lot of girls want to achieve which by the way there is no certain look that you should work towards whatever you want to work towards is personally towards you I'm not promoting a certain body type love yourself and love who you are because that's the initial start to start in your fit fitness journey and to improve yourself you can't hate how you look and discourage yourself because that's not a right mindset to have 
So just to finally touch up on spot production, if you want to build a certain physique such as, you know, a thinner waist and a slimmer tummy and bigger toned legs like, I, like a lot of people desire, um, this dream physique that people have brought up in their head, then you have to train your body to be able to do that. And to be able to train your body to do that, you need to build muscle, lean muscle, and to be able to do that, you need to be in a caloric surplus over an extended period of time. And to be able to see those results over that period of time, then you need to then go down slowly again to your caloric deficit calories to reveal that muscle. Because when you do gain weight, it's not just weight from the muscle that you've built over that period of time that you prolonged the caloric surplus to and progressively overloading with your training, you, you may also gain fat in that process. And that is completely fine. It's just part of the process. And once you do, you and once you've reached that um, final stage of your physique, you then want to go down, like I say. And that is potentially going to shreddy, like people say, um, that layer of fat and reveal the muscle that you built up whilst you've been in that caloric surplus. Because like I mentioned previously in the video, to be able to build muscle, it requires an extended amount of energy from your total daily energy expenditure because the muscle building process requires extra energy. So yeah, please don't come into the mindset when you want to start your fitness journey that you want to look a certain way because that's not gonna make you see results. You need to come into it open-mindedly and come into it thinking, I want to just make myself feel better within myself and potentially physically, if that's what you want. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to think smart. You need to not think, I wanna look like this and not like that straight away. Because like I say, and like you would notice throughout the video, everything takes time. You can't just rush into things. It just won't work. And if it does work for you, it's only gonna be for a short while. It's not gonna be sustainable. The whole goal within all of this is to sustain the results that you want and maintain your physique throughout your fitness journey. And so now finally your macro split, which is what I sort of touched on already uh, in reference to um, different diets and things like that, is how many carbs should I be having? How many fats should I be having? How much protein should I be having? And that is all reliant on your calorie intake. So I can't just give you a general figure for each macro, but I would suggest that you follow the macro split that I follow, which I found really beneficial to me. Not necessarily saying that it may work for you, um, but I just like to share it. It's 60% carbs, 20% protein, and 20% fat. And so it, within my current calories now, it obviously changes if I'm at a different um, calorie intake. It is um, uh, 215 carbs. Roughly, it's a 120 protein, roughly, and it is around 48 grams of fat, roughly. Gram up or down, I'm not that concerned. With, as long as I'm reaching my caloric intake of 1,750, I'm gonna see the results that I want to see. But yeah, there is no most superior or beneficial macro split that that's gonna be magical to you. You know, you just gotta go through trial and error and see what works for you. If you flourish off of a high carb diet, go with that. If you flourish off of a high, higher protein diet, go off of that. If you flourish off of a higher in fat diet, then go off of that. But you need to make sure that you're getting each essential macronutrient because they are just as important. And also your micronutrients are really important as well. So please don't restrict your carbs. Carbs are not the enemy. They are energy building block that needs to be used in your body to be able to build muscle or lose weight. Please don't think fat is what makes you gain fat because that is all wrong as well. And please don't think that protein is the only macronutrient and the godly macronutrient which is gonna make you gain weight, make you gain muscle as well because it's not. Like I say, which I'm repeating throughout this whole video, each macronutrient is just as beneficial for you as each one. But the macro calculator websites actually explain this idea really well 
and which split may work for you personally. So I do recommend giving the links a little browse and having a little read. And now you may be thinking, Layla, how are you saying all this advice? Where did you get this from? Where are your resources? Where are the articles that state all these facts? And like I said at the start of the video, this is purely from my experience and my past knowledge of all of this and what has worked best for me but people that I recommend in particular is a girl called Natasha Ostian. she is really good in highlighting the facts from articles that she has personally read and recommended I've gone on to them as well and throughout my whole fitness journey from the age of 15 I have always done my own research on Google um, from different articles from different people on YouTube and collaborated it all together to be able to feed this knowledge back to you and shown which has what has worked for me and so I do really advise that you do your own background knowledge as well because like I say this is my experience take it with a pinch of salt because what may work for me may not work for you I hope this video has come across really helpful I hope this hasn't come across where I'm the type of person that is unhealthy and restricts my food and is very controlled with my food. I'm not. Will I be tracking my macros forever? No, I won't be. Why am I still doing it? It's because I find it really helpful and that's the bottom line to it. I don't have to explain myself any further. I love the way I eat. I love the way that I track my macros and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Whether somebody else has a problem with tracking macros and stuff, that's their concern and their opinion. Everyone is entitled to share their opinion, their experience of things. This is mine. I really do hope you found it helpful. Please let me know if you did in the comments section down below and whether you'd like me to create a question and answer which, which I'll post on my Instagram where you can leave a bunch of questions and I can ask more uh, answer more specific questions. I think I covered a lot of the points today but I've just worked off my head and my past experience of it all. So please do give this thumbs, uh, video a thumbs up if you did like it as well. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.